Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing one of my favourite videos to film, which is an unhaul. So in case you are new to booktube, um, an unhaul is where you go through all the books that you are getting rid of. Uh, obviously the opposite to a haul, where you're bringing books into your collection. These are the books that are leaving my shelves. Now, the usual disclaimer before I get into the books, if you were kind enough to gift me one of these books or any of these books, it's not because I didn't like them. Sorry, the cat's just coming out of his um, his drum, if you can hear him moving around. Um, it wasn't because I don't like you or I didn't like the book. I just can't keep every single book that I read. As of the day of filming this, I have finished 99 books this year. I only have a certain amount of space and so I have to clear out books. Um, I only keep books that I gave either four or five stars to and that I'm going to read again. So some of these I rated really highly, but I'm just not gonna read them and I would rather pass them on to a home where they're gonna get loved and read again. Um, so the books that I get rid of, they will either be going into my classroom library. I'm a teacher, English teacher. So they'll be going into my classroom library for next year or they will be being donated to the local charity shop. So that is where they are going. I'm sorry if you can hear the cat, he's now cleaning himself just down here. Um, Jack, that's really not helpful. Hang on one second. Okay, sorry about that. He was trying to lie on the plastic bags that I've been keeping the books in and that was just gonna make really annoying background noise. So I've removed that temptation for him and now he's wandered off. So hopefully it'll be a bit more peaceful. So these are the books that are leaving my collection. And like I said, a lot of them are books I've just really enjoyed, but I'm not gonna read them again. So let's go through. So the first one is, these are in no particular order either, by the way, they're just stacked up next to me, was Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. I read this earlier in the year. It's historical fiction, London, 1683. And we've got a child who is kept basically as a curiosity. Um, I really enjoyed this. Um, but I won't read it again. I thought it was atmospheric and creepy. Would definitely recommend. Just not going to read it again. Next is Sister Song by Lucy Holland. This was the um, art copy that was very kindly sent uh, by Book Break. Uh, this came out in April. I think I had it in January. Um, this is historical fiction. We're in London. Not in London. In England. I think it's like... 58 AD or something so we're right back in history and it's a retelling of the two sisters the song of two sisters um I thought this was fantastic I definitely want to get my hands on a finished copy because it's beautiful I mean this this arc is lovely but the finished copy is gorgeous so I really want a finished copy of it um but I'm not going to reread the arc and it's kind of done the rounds of my friends and family so this one I think I will put into my school library or my my library in my classroom uh, because I think some of the older kids would find this really interesting. Next, there's another one that's going into the classroom right library, and that is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I read this a couple of years ago, absolutely loved it. It's a fantastic fantasy story about um, a little girl who, uh, uh, basically there's a witch who every um, year or so the villagers leave a baby as a sacrifice to the witch. The witch is very confused by this behaviour because she didn't request babies as sacrifices. So she takes the babies, she walks them through the woods and she gives them to a different city on the other side of the woods. <clears throat> and then one day she accidentally feeds um, moonlight to one of the babies who then grows up um, to have magic. And it's a lovely, lovely story. Found family, absolutely fab. Will be perfect for my classroom library and that's where it's going. Next is The Disappearances by Emily Bain Murphy. I loved this. I read this a few years ago. Um, I can't really remember much about it. The cover is beautiful. I remember really, really enjoying it. And again, it will go into my classroom library. Um, it says on the back, every seven years, something disappears in the remote town of Stirling. People's reflections, the stars in the sky, the ability to dream. Ayla realises that her mother may be to blame for the curse, but some mysteries are buried very deep and some secrets want to stay hidden. And one young woman's desire to uncover the truth may not be enough to save the people of Sterling from the past. A be beautifully told story of love, lost, and finding the truth, no matter how difficult that may be. So yeah, I think this would be good for my classroom library. Then we've got uh, Reservoir 13 by John McGregor. This is one of the books my brother gifted me for Christmas. I really enjoyed this one. I didn't expect to because it's very, very slow. Nothing really happens. Um, and the mystery that is at the center of it doesn't necessarily get resolved. Uh, but I still really enjoyed it. There was something really atmospheric about the writing and I would definitely read more from the author. I'm just not going to read this again. Then we've got Burn Our Bodies Down uh, by Rory Power. Again, this was sent to me by Book Break um, in exchange for an honest review. And to be honest, I didn't like it. I didn't get it. I thought it was kind of boring. Um, having loved Wilder Girls, it was a bit of a disappointment. 
Uh, so yeah, this one will be going out. Um, and again, it will go into my classroom library because uh, some of my teenagers might like it. Then one that I read recently is Bad Habits by Flynn Meany. This is very kindly gifted to me by Charlotte at Books and Bargains. And it was fun, uh, but I'm just not going to read it again. So I don't need to keep hold of it. Then we've got The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is a book that I read a few years ago. Um, and it's set in a world in which women suddenly are able to electrocute people with their hands. And it's about the shift in power. It was interesting at the time. I don't think it would stand up to a reread. And so... I don't need to keep hold of it. Then we've got Brain on Fire by Susanna Cal Callahan. I read this last year or the year before for Mental Healthathon. Um, it's a non-fiction book about Susanna's um, experience. Um, is it on the back? Um, she basically, she had a um, infection in her brain and that meant that she was exhibiting symptoms of um, schizophrenia and other like serious mental illness issues and it's about what happened to her and this is fantastic i would really highly recommend this i gave it five stars i think but it's just one of those books that i i won't need to read again it was quite hard going it wasn't difficult to read it was very very intense um and i don't think i'm gonna need to read it again but i would love other people to read it so i'm gonna send it out into the world for somebody to pick up then we got a book that did disappoint me, which was Perfectly Preventable Deaths by Deirdre Sullivan. I was really, had really, really high hopes for this. I read it recently and I was bored. Uh, so yeah, don't need to be keeping that on my shelf. Then we've got another one that I enjoyed, but I don't need to read again. When I Hit You by Mina Kandas Kandasami. This is fiction, but it feels like fictionalised real life. Um, it's about a woman who is in an abusive relationship with her husband and what happens. Um really enjoyed it if you if enjoyed it is the right word like appreciated the writing but i don't need to read this again um so again sending it out into the world then i've got a book i really didn't like that i dnf'd uh which is some kids i taught and what they taught me by kate clanchy i read started reading this a couple of months ago really loved the introduction and there were several like laugh out loud bits and a couple of bits i read out to my husband because it's all about teaching it's non-fiction but about Kate's real life experiences as a teacher in secondary schools and I was like yes this is going to be a book for me and then got into the main bulk of the book I think I DNF'd it around sort of 100 pages and it was just really white saviour uh fat phobic thinly veiled racist and I was just really uncomfortable about the way she was talking about some of the kids and some of the situations and it was just it just it wasn't for me so that needs to go then we've got The Grace Year by Kim Leggett. Again, this will be going into my classroom library. Um, this is dystopian fiction in which, in a world where girls, when they are 15, 14, 15, 16, go out um, for their grace year. So they leave their community for a whole year. And the idea is that it's for them to get rid of their so-called magic so they can then come back and be suitable and docile for marriage. And we follow... Um, a group of girls on their grace year and as it says at the top the resistance starts here so i think there are going to be more books in this series which i will definitely read and i really enjoyed the way that kim leggett wrote this book but i just know that i won't read it again so it might as well go somewhere useful then we have another one from um deirdre sullivan this is tangleweed and brian and again i was just not hooked by this collection um this is a collection of fairy tale retellings retold with like a feminist twist to them i had really high expectations i absolutely love this cover it just didn't work for me i don't think deirdre sullivan is an author for me unfortunately then we've got paradigm uh, by um alan glynn this came in my box of stories box and i read it and i think i gave it two or three stars it's okay it just wasn't amazing um and it's a it's a sort of thriller it's supposed to be a thriller about a man who sees another man who looks just like him on the street and it kind of goes from there um and yeah it was it was all right but i'm not gonna read it again then we've got ali smith the um how to be both and again this is another book my brother gifted me for christmas and this was my second or third ali smith and i've come to the conclusion she's just not an author for me I read this whole book and I genuinely couldn't tell you what it's about or what happens um, because I just didn't understand it at all. I'm clearly not intelligent enough and yeah, I feel bad because I know it's one of my brother's like favourite books of last year, but it just wasn't for me. Uh, we then also have Empress Orchard by Anne Chi Min. I have the second book um, in this duology upstairs. I did enjoy this. Um, this is about 
a woman in China in the 1800s or early 1900s um, who becomes a concubine and then eventually um, one of the wives of the emperor um, and it's just about her life. It was um, sold to me as a better version of uh, Memoirs of a Geisha. Memoirs of a Geisha is written by a white man. This is written um, own voices so I was really excited to pick this up. I did enjoy it. I've got a second one on my shelf upstairs to read but I know I won't reread the first one so that can go. We also have All That Remains by Sue Black. This was a non-fiction book that I buddy read with a couple of people a couple of years ago now and I really enjoyed it. Um, Sue Black is a forensic anthropologist um, and it's about her job. It's non-fiction and as it says on the tin it's it's about life and death um, and what we leave behind and I found it fascinating. I think I gave it four or five stars at the time but again I'm just I'm not going to pick it up again so somebody else can enjoy it. Then we've got another one that's definitely going into my classroom library. That's Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. Um, this is told in verse. And it's about a teenage boy whose son, whose son, whose brother is shot dead in the street in a street shooting. And he decides that he's going to go and get revenge. So he takes his brother's gun. He gets in the lift and he's on his way to get revenge. And when he gets into the lift, something happens. And that's all I'll say. Um, and it's very much about revenge and um experiences of particularly young black boys and the choices that we make and i thought it was fantastic and i would definitely be encouraging my kids to pick it up and read it then we've got a really a big one <laughs> um kate atkinson life after life i mean i'm not sure if you can tell but it's a big book we're we're, we're over we're over 550 pages it's it's big um this is a book i really enjoyed this is historical fiction with a fantasy twist um I'll read you a little bit at the back to give you an idea. What if you had the chance to live your life again and again until you finally got it right? During a snowstorm in England in 1910, a baby is born and dies before she can take her first breath. During a snowstorm in England in 1910, the same baby is born and lives to tell the tale. What if there were second chances and third chances? In fact, an infinite number of chances to live your life. Would you eventually be able to save the world from its own inevitable destiny? And would you even want to? So we're following the same character over and over through these different possibilities of her life. Um, and it starts during World War I and finishes just after World War II, I think. I loved Kate, Kate Atkinson's writing. I definitely want to read more from her. But this is a big book. It takes up a lot of space and I'm not going to read it again. So out it goes. Then we've got another book that I loved. That is The Million Pieces of Nina Jill by Emma Smith Barton. Again, I read this from Telethon, I think last year or the year before. Um, this is going to be going into my classroom library. Um, we are following Nina, whose brother has disappeared. And it's about her descent into madness um and yeah and what happens to her it was absolutely brilliant but i'm not going to read it again and it can definitely do more good in my classroom rather than on my shelf then we've got one of the first arcs i ever had this is the temple house vanishing from by rachel donahue i enjoyed this book um look at this for an arc it's very exciting um this is about this says like very dark academia vibes um and it's about two girls at a boarding school and what happens to them that's really what i'm gonna say weirdly i've not really heard anyone else on booktube talking about this and i enjoyed it i thought it was clever especially for a debut i think i gave it four stars but i'm not gonna read this again so it can go to somebody else then we've got a book i really enjoyed the secret history of witches by louisa morgan i read this a couple of months ago now um it was kind of gifted to me by olivia spanner from olivia's catastrophe um and it's historical fiction about witches and it's very much um about how the power is passed from mother to daughter all through the ages i thought it was fantastic i definitely want to keep going i think it's part of a series um i definitely want to keep reading but the, again this is a big book and i'm just not gonna i'm not gonna reread this one so it can go out to somebody else then we've got night shift by kira ladner this was sent to me by book break in exchange for an honest review and i didn't love it um i buddy read this with charlotte from books and bargains and we were both a little bit confused by it um it's about a woman who um, meets another woman in her day job and becomes obsessed with her and then joins the night shift to be closer to this woman and to be more like her. And it's supposed to be kind of about the alternative London um, of people who work night shifts. And it was quite creepy. I think it could have gone a lot further. And yeah, it wasn't my favourite thing I've read, but it, it was it was okay. And for a debut, it was good. I read more from the author, but I'm not going to pick it up again. Then we've got a book I really hated. 
and that's the silent patient doesn't have a dust jacket um charlotte gave this to me when she unhauled it and she warned me i'd hate it and she was right i really hated it this is by alex michaelides and i hated it enough that i have no interest in reading anything else that he writes so that can go out of my collection we then have another massive book the secret life of mr ruse by haken nessa again this was sent to me by book break um this is a scandi noir book um, about a man who wins the lottery and instead of telling his family he's won the lottery he decides to buy a cabin in the woods instead um i dnf'd this because i got halfway through and nothing had happened and i was bored so i dnf'd it and gave it to my father-in-law who read it and enjoyed it so it has been read um but now it's come back to me and i i don't need it so it can go out then we've got uh you are not alone by greer hendrix and sarah pakinen just bear with me one second Sorry about that, guys. This might be one of my most chaotic videos ever. Basically, these books have been in a bag <laughs> in my office for a while, collecting dust. And then, obviously, I took them out of the bag to film. And I've been waving them around. And there was loads of dust everywhere, so I've just had a massive, like, coughing fit, which, obviously, I didn't want to do on camera. So, whew, I'm just going to compose myself. We've only got four more books. So, yeah. Sorry about that. So the next book is You Are Not Alone by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pakinen. They wrote The Wife Between Us, which is one of my favourite thrillers. So when um, Charlotte said she was getting rid of this, I like happily grabbed this out of the pile. And this was very, very average. Um, nowhere near as good as The Wife Between Us, in my opinion. Um, and basically we're following Shay, who one day sees a woman step in front of a subway train. Um, and she, Shay, is then kind of adopted by this woman's friends and it goes from there and it is creepy there was a twist or two but i just didn't love it as much as um the wife between us and again it's a big hardback so i don't need to keep it then we've got i'm hoping i'm gonna say this right a paragon by colin mccann and again i feel bad because it's another one of the books my brother um gifted me for christmas it's very pretty um and this is a complicated one to explain so I think I'm just going to read you some of the blurb because even though I read the whole thing, I'm not sure I could explain it accurately. So it says, Rami and Bassam live near, near one another, yet they exist worlds apart. Rami is Israeli, Bassam is Palestinian. Rami's license plate is yellow, Bassam's license plate, license plate is green. It takes Rami 15 minutes to drive to the West Bank. The same journey for Bassam takes an hour and a half. Both men have lost their daughters. Rami's 13-year-old daughter, um, Sam Samadar, was killed by a suicide bomber whilst out shopping with her friends. Bassam's 10-year-old daughter, Abia, was shot and killed by a member of the border police outside her school. There was a candy bracelet in her pocket she hadn't yet had time to eat. The men became the best of friends. In this epic novel, named for a shape with a countably infinite number of sides, Colin McCann crosses centuries and continents, stitching time, art, history, nature and politics into a tapestry of friendship, love, loss and belonging. Musical, muscular, de delicate and soaring. This is a book for our times from a writer at the height of his powers. So yeah, a bit like the Ali Smith book. I read this whole thing and I just don't think I got it. I also felt a little bit uncomfortable about this white man telling this story. Uh, because it's not in voices um and yeah it's it's not one of my favorite books it's massive i'm not gonna read it again so somebody else can go and enjoy it two more books um so the next one is the betrayals by bridget collins um this is a book that i actually did enjoy if i remember correctly um yeah again dark academia vibes a little bit weird um and the author's been problematic online so even though it's super pretty it's not a book that i need in my collection anymore and then the very last one is a long way from home by peter carey again this came in my box of stories books a uh, box of stories box i have to admit i haven't read it i try i read the first chapter and it just wasn't hooking me so i passed it on to my father-in-law he read it and enjoyed it um i think it's set in australia Yes, uh, Irene Bobbs does fast driving. Her husband is the best car salesman in rural southeastern Australia. Together with Willie, their lanky navigator, they embark upon the Red X trial, a brutal race across, around the continent over roads no car will ever quite survive. And it just wasn't hooking me, but apparently my father-in-law enjoyed it. So at least somebody's read it. And again, they can go out into the world. So <laughs> this is the most un like chaotic unhaul ever. Those are all the books I'm getting rid of. Like I said, some of them will be going into my classroom library, others will be going to my local charity shop for other people to pick up and enjoy and hopefully 
like they'll just you know spread the bookish love if you've made it this far in the video leave me a skull emoji i do love this cover uh please subscribe if you would like more of this chaos and i will see you in the next one thanks guys bye